We begin with that new image in the search for Flight 370. Tonight, a Chinese satellite has spotted something in the Indian Ocean that may be debris from the plane. You'll remember that first satellite image from an Australian satellite earlier this week. Authorities thought it was debris. Now, this new image, roughly the same size, and the distance between the two spots, about 79 miles. We have team coverage on this again tonight, including your questions from home. Among them, why no drones flying overhead? But first, our team about to board a plane to search for that debris. And we begin here with ABC's David Wright again tonight. David, good evening. Good evening, David. From Pierce Airfield, the staging area for the Royal Australian Air Force, we're about to get on board an Australian P-3 Orion headed into the search area. All of the aircraft headed out today have one focus, the area seen in that Chinese satellite image. Take a closer look. It shows what appears to be an object floating in the Indian Ocean, an object of significant size, 73 feet by 42 feet. The image taken March 18th, last Tuesday, around noon local time by the Chinese. News of this tantalizing new lead broke dramatically with a piece of paper handed to the Malaysian defense minister while he was briefing reporters. The news that I just received is that uh, the Chinese ambassador uh, received satellite image of floating objects in the southern corridor and they will be sending ships to verify. His excitement palpable. If not for that paper, the headline would have been another day of frustration. This is all I have. Today's location is about 79 miles southwest of the last satellite images showing debris. The ones we were chasing last week on board that U.S. Navy P-8. But that day we came up empty. They call this area the Roaring 40. The current strong, the ocean constantly churning. Today, even more so, a tropical storm is bearing down on the search area, reducing visibility, whipping up waves, and possibly making it hazardous to fly. It is not just military planes in the air today. There are also several chartered private jets helping in the search. And on the surface of the water, ships, an Australian naval vessel, and at least two merchant vessels also helping in this search. David? All right, David, right tonight. David, thank you. And with this new satellite image, you can only imagine what it's been like for the families of the 239 on board waiting for any sign. Tonight, ABC's Bob Woodruff on the long wait, as we also hear for the first time from a pilot who flew that very plane on that very route. Bob is in Kuala Lumpur again for us. Bob? David, yes, this has been a very difficult time for the families, and when they hear once again that the debris has been located by satellite, they're understandably skeptical. Those sightings have so far not solved the mystery for families, but have led to excruciating ups and downs. The anguish can be seen in the faces of the families. We met with the wife and kids of Patrick Gomez, who is the chief steward on the plane. They're desperate for some kind of answer. If it's in the ocean, it brings us closure. But at the back of our mind, we hope that it's, you know, they say it's a hijacking and all that. It's somewhere. Then there's hope that he's still alive and he'll come back to us. But the mystery only deepens. We talked with a Malaysian airline pilot who recently flew the very plane that's gone missing and he's flown that same route to Beijing. He wouldn't speculate about what he thinks happened, but told us when he was in that cockpit, he was ready for anything. Their mind is constantly moving, thinking of scenarios to save the aeroplane, you know, preparing for, uh, enjoying the best, preparing for the worst. But if pilots are trained in extreme situations, families are not. Now, the stress of this search on friends and relatives is relentless. In fact, some family members at the hotels have been rushed off to the hospital by ambulance when there is some new development. It has been a long, painful road, David, with a long way to go. Bob Woodruff again tonight. Bob, thank you. And now to your questions at home still pouring in. So many of you tweeting what you want answered. So let's get right to it. I want to bring in our aviation consultant, John Nance, a pilot himself. And John, quite a few viewers asking about drones. Rilla for one asking, why not use a couple of predators? They can search in any weather, longer, over greater areas. Uh, so what about drones, John? There's no question a drone could do a much better job of staying out there and loitering, and they do have cameras aboard, but the problem is we need human eyes on the water, and the reason is because a drone would take millions of pictures, or at least tens of thousands, and a human has to go through them. If there is one on site, you're going to be able to see that in the water and know that that's the thing you're looking for. And John, with so much attention tonight on that new image from the Chinese of possible debris in the water, and given how quickly that mm -hmm. debris moves, Winston asking tonight, could the satellite have continued to track the debris until help arrived? 
if it had been real time. But the problem is we get these three or four days after the picture has been taken and the satellite has already moved off. It's whirling around at 17,000 miles an hour at an orbit of about 100 to 150 miles. This is not like the geosynchronous satellite that can look down constantly and hover. Those don't have the camera capabilities. So our problem is time. And John, this next question about the cockpit and the pilots themselves, and this one has come up before. Lou asking, why is there no cockpit video recorder? Then we would be able to see what's happening during the flight. Absolutely correct, and this is something that has to be changed. All the pilots' unions around the world have not wanted video in the cockpit up to now. We have to have it. It would have solved several accidents, uh, at least over the last 10 years. And a quick one, John, and we've talked about how deep the Indian Ocean is here. Jack asking, to what ocean depth is a black box capable of surviving water pressure with its recorded data still intact? As far as we know, probably all the way down in the Mariana Trench. In other words, there is no limit. These, these images and everything in the recorder is imprinted on a little chip, and it is very well protected, and nothing in the way of water pressure is going to hurt it. All right, John Nance with us here again tonight, and keep tweeting me your questions from home. They've been great. Use the hashtag AskWorldNews, and we'll keep on it here.